the concealed carry database has uh, uh, been something that we've been fighting to get rid of uh, uh, ever since it was scheduled to sunset two years ago. Uh, and uh, the, uh, it, it, <laughs> the major concern in the article uh, talks about the uh, uh, sheriffs uh, opting out, not, not providing the information. And, and that's, been, uh, that's been part of the, the database from its inception uh, seven years ago. Yeah, well, and, you know, and a lot of the sheriffs are saying, you know, they don't want, they're doing it because a lot of the, the, their constituents are saying they don't want, you know, to be in the same database as criminals. But I'm also sure that many of those permit holders, they're concerned about the misuse of this information. Exactly. And that's one thing that, that the article doesn't talk about that, that, that I have firsthand from at least one sheriff uh, in Colorado, why he does not uh, participate in the program, and, and he does not believe in the database at all because he believes it is ripe uh, to be uh, uh, misused and abused by law enforcement. Um, when this uh, was scheduled to be uh, sunsetted a couple years ago, uh, I provided the, uh, uh, the Colorado State Senate, the, the, the Judiciary Committee, uh, several examples, uh, first-hand examples that, that had been uh, provided to me as an attorney of situations where uh, law enforcement officers uh, inappropriately started uh, asking somebody you know, during the course of a regular uh, police contact uh, about, their, uh, about their firearms possession and their, and their concealed carry, uh, whether or not they had a firearm on their person when it wasn't uh, uh, even relevant to the situation. We, mm -hmm. we had a board director on, on the Colorado State Shooting Association. Uh, they reported a burglary uh, in, in their home, and the officer who came to uh, take uh, take the report, the first thing he asked uh, uh, asked our uh, asked our treasurer was, uh, uh, "Do you have a firearm? Or are you wearing a firearm in your person?" Uh, you know, why should he know that, and why should that even be a relevant issue? He's there to take a police report uh, on on a burglary, uh, and it just shows that this officer was 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 running a check on on these people uh, and and uh, check to see if they had a had, had a concealed carry permit. I know that's got to be a major major current concern. I know it was for all of you when you were fighting this from the beginning. But you know when you look at the numbers, thirty two thousand. That's sixty three percent of the fifty one thousand records in that database. They're inaccurate or they're inconsistent. And you've got sheriff's, you know, officers who are saying, you know, we rely on that. Some of them are saying in the audit, the state patrol troopers surveyed for the audit said they act on their initial findings. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and, and the whole legal system provides them protection from that, too, because uh, officers have qualified immunity. Uh, so as long as they're acting in good faith, uh, based on information uh, that's provided to them, if that information turns out to be erroneous, uh, there's no there's no liability on their part, either criminal or civil, uh, for what they do. So, and 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 that that that's always been our problem with with this database is uh, it's it's it's. You know, it, it's incomplete. Uh, the, the the purpose of the database, we were told when when we passed shall issue concealed carry here in Colorado, was uh, for to allow sheriffs who had issued permits under the old May issue uh, mm -hmm. system we had in Colorado to keep track of to, to keep track of their older permits. And as these permits dropped off, expired, uh, there would be no further need for a database. And, and so we all expected this to go away uh, uh, two years ago. And, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, anti-gun forces uh, uh, wanted, uh, wanted, uh, wanted to have this information. And, and uh, uh, the, the sheriffs were not really pushing for it uh, to be reenacted, but um, uh, chiefs of police uh, uh, certainly wanted this information. Yeah, I mean, and you're looking at, you know, there's the possibility of people, honest, you know, valid permit holders being wrongfully arrested. And, and on top of that, they could release somebody who shouldn't be released. Right. And, and the legal landscape has changed, too. Uh, you know, this, this all came prior to uh, the decisions in Heller and McDonald. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the issue of whether where the firearms possession and ownership by, by a, a law-abiding citizen is, is a constitutional right has been put to bed. Uh, and so, you know, and, and that's, that's one thing I, you know, I basically got into a debate with Senator Morse, uh, who uh, um, was uh, at that time the chairman of the, of the Senate Judiciary Committee here in Colorado, because uh, he thought uh, officers should be allowed uh, to know as much as they could about any person that they came in contact with, and it was a matter of officer safety. And officer safety was more important than constitutional rights. Uh, of individuals, and and that uh, that that was very concerning, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that kind of gives you an insight as to where the advocates of this of this database are coming from. Yeah, 
And you've got these auditors saying, you know, that the lack of participation makes it hard for them to decide if the data base serves a right. meaningful purpose. This, yeah, <laughs> it, that, well, that's interesting because this audit was actually prompted uh, by some pro-gun legislators mm. in Colorado when uh, when the when the the database was extended, and of course uh, that came right on the heels of the big recession that we're all all stuck in right now. And so uh, some pro-gun legislators said, "We want an audit of this of this database to see if it's even of any use." Uh, you know, you know why we should continue to to have it. it it's costing the state money. Uh, why should we even need to have it if it's not necessary uh, for uh, for law enforcement? And uh, you know, and, and and right now the audit is saying we can't even come to a conclusion one way or the other because uh, it's so uh, it's so incomplete and, and and so rife with errors and so unreliable. And I also think the point that many of the new the 17 new sheriffs taken office in January, they have pledged not to enter That's right. the permits into this That's database. Right. That's right, absolutely. Well, I think it's important to note, you know, from, from the article, um, both uh, both Sheriff Taylor there in um, um, the uh, in, in Pueblo and uh, Mr. Cure from uh, the, uh, the the county sheriffs, they both agree that officer safety is not compromised by the absence of information in the database because those records are maintained by the departments that issued the permits, and that's been my argument all along because mm -hmm. we've been uh, you know we've been trying to get the concealed carry permits to validate background checks for firearms purchases here in Colorado, and one of the one of the things the the, the smoke screens that keep getting thrown up is. Well, the database is incomplete. Not all sheriffs provide the information to the database. So, how is somebody going to know if whether whether or not a permit is is valid or up to date? And, I, and my response was, pick up the phone and call the sheriff yeah. to issue the permit. <laughs> I said, I said, you know, are sheriffs keeping bankers hours now? Last I checked, law enforcement was a twenty four seven type of uh, operation. So, you should be able to pick up the phone any time, day or night, call that sheriff's department and verify whether or not a a permit is valid. You shouldn't need a database.